Welcome to Discourse, that's Rita. That's Tony. And today we're talking about secrets to parenting without giving a All the tanks are ready. All right, so this book sold me a bill of goods in that I thought it was going to tell me how to parent without caring and without putting in any effort at all, but that's not true. <laughs> Little did you know, you still have to care and put in effort as a parent. I know, I love how at the end, that's kind of what she says, like, it's, you really do have to actually do things, change your ways, things about the way you think and act around your kids in order to parent them, which makes sense. You can't just totally be like, well, just go and try and figure it out. But that's not fair. I'm just saying, this <laughs> book cover made it seem to me like, oh, great, I don't have to care. <laughs> Being a parent, that's what I'm in for. That's what I'm about. Um, but no, I think she says, I think the secrets to parenting without caring, let's say, is the secret to parenting without caring what other people think, mm -hmm. I think is the point, right? Because she mentions in there don't, the four Fs, which again is kind of vulgar, so I can't mention it. Did you read the four Fs? Yeah, I did. Yeah, which I thought was great. It was a great point where you don't have to care about anybody else that's not supporting you, essentially. Mm -hmm. They're not feeding you. Feeding you, funding you, <laughs> yeah. uh, F Fing you, and then what was the fourth one? Uh, fixing things for you. Okay. That was it. <laughs> so, a lot of good parenting advice in here. A lot of it I felt was standard material. Uh, it wasn't like groundbreaking, but sometimes people just need you to, to tell you those things, right? Not everybody knows it. I feel like when it comes to parenting, we kind of overthink and overanalyze and oh, which she, she talks about a lot, like you're overdoing it mm -hmm. when really it's more simple than that. It's actually just like, just let it, let it go, let it be, yeah. and watch how they thrive. Yeah, and I like the idea that she's saying you're basically, you're, you gotta think of it like you're raising adults, like they're adults in training, yes, right? Yes, I love that. Um, I have two kids, you have two kids immediately. Immediately, two <laughs> twins. So, so you can kind of relate to the author, right? Because she had twins or triplets? She had triplets, Woo! that's crazy. That's rough, I know. but you had twins. Yeah. Not expecting it, right? The doctor tells you that and you're like, what? So shocking. So I can imagine if it was triplets, oh my God, I'd still be crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh good. Um, but even just one kid, I mean. Yeah, so you can kind of, you, I think you can relate better than she did. Um, I had one kid at one time, so I was able to just focus on one where you had, you had like an immediate family. I know. <laughs> like a full blown family. And having different, and she goes through that too with all her kids, they all had different personalities, but they're all very strong and independent, you know, and yeah. these types of, it makes things more complex. So she goes yeah. through how to deal with all that, which is cool. Yeah, so I, I learned a lot of this stuff, which, which she's teaching in here along the way, a lot of stuff I didn't know. Um, but I think she describes it well, but I still feel like in some moments, the book title should be like, How to Parent Suburban Children. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you're assuming that you have the means and the time to, to do, do all, all these, these things, things, to work with your children. Because a lot of people in lower classes don't have time, they don't have the money, they don't have the resources to pull this off. Right. Um, but I feel like if you have the means and the time and you care enough about your children, <laughs> right, you're able to do you could do a lot of this stuff. Also, what I like about this author is that she infuses a lot of her character mm -hmm. in the story. And she is funny. A lot of it is like, uh, kind of preachy, like she's telling you to do things. It's a parenting book, of course. Yeah. But she's also funny. Let me read you this one funny quote in the book. It was an experience she had with her daughter. Uh, she says, I was rocking my 1980s bright Argyle Benetton sweater. My daughter innocently asked if she could borrow my sweater. Of course, I said, I could not have been pr more proud that my good taste had transcended decades. <laughs> she immediately followed with, it's ugly sweater day. There you go. <laughs> Kids are savage, man. They will cut you deep. And they don't even realize it or care. But you know, even though it's really hurtful, I love that about kids. They're so innocent and pure and just like straight forward. Just yeah, no malice in it, right? Yeah, just... I mean they don't mean it to break your heart and to ruin your whole soul, but <laughs> they definitely do. <laughs> but yeah. I, I also thought through the whole book. A lot of this applied more to older kids. I have toddlers, so I feel like some of the things I can apply now, like letting them gain their independence, things like that. But a lot of it, like having discussions or dealing with school and things like that, mm -hmm. friends and activities, it's more applied to 
maybe junior high, like, you know, yeah, elementary school. Yeah, like kids. middle school and up. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, it, it definitely gears, gears more up. towards the older kids, whereas she doesn't really tell you how to deal with temper tantrums. Yeah. She tells you how to like negotiate with people that can make conscious choices because she tells you like give your kids choices, right? Which is a good idea. Yeah. But when they're four years old and all they want to do is scream and all they want is like candy and sugar Popsicles, and to go play, yeah. like it's hard to give them choices in that moment right. when they're screaming. Uh, so I don't, there's, there's not a lot of like parenting advice for toddlers. Right. But it's more of like parenting advice for teenagers. Yeah, like elementary and up, I think. She does say it's from like two and up, but I feel like it's a little little bit older than little that. Older. Like there's some, like just this week, I actually started applying a few of the things that she mentioned. Like I allowed them, I put out their clothes and their stuff, mm. but I told them, hey, you get dressed. And then I was able to do things while they were getting dressed, even though it took them like 20, 30 minutes and they would play <laughs> in between, they still got it done. And if they needed help, I told them, just ask. And so it kind of gave them like that moment to be like, okay, I'm in charge of myself right now. Mm -hmm. And Emma was so excited. Like one of my daughters was so excited afterwards. She was like, mama, I did it. Like <laughs> achievement. Yeah. Where's had, my medal? Yeah. And I had breakfast done and ready and I was dressed and they were dressed. It was awesome. Yeah. And along those lines, she talks about being okay with mediocrity. Right. right? Like you, you got to let them do it on their own. They love it. But also, they're not going to do it right, so you got to just be okay with it not being perfect. Let it slide. Like, I think as they start to get a little bit older for my girls, I'll help, have them help me clean the house. But it's not going to be the <laughs> cleanest table. It's not going to be the cleanest, you yeah. know, bathroom, but at least they helped and they're feeling confident in themselves. Yeah. Like, I'm a valuable asset to this family. We're yeah. a team. And I think that's the key, right, is getting them to feel like they're part of the family. Yeah. They're no longer outside of it because you're doing everything. They're, they're not part of it. Yeah. But then also can be their individual self, Yeah, which is important. And I really liked how I felt like throughout this whole book, it was more of like a therapy type of thing for myself, like my mm -hmm. own mind. I needed to think about me, how I think about things, how I do things and really change my mentality about it and do like soul searching almost to yeah. parent my children. It's more of like towards in the beginning, I felt like it was like parenting, but towards the end, I felt like it was more personal development yeah, exactly. and changing you as a person, which I think she does mention in here. She's like, yeah. being a good parent means like being a better person maybe. Mm -hmm. And there's more, it's, it's like really a personal development book rather than like a parenting book. Mm -hmm. It's like half and half I felt. Yeah. I, which I really like though, because it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. If you want well, you know, developed children, I mean, you kind of have to do a little bit work on yourself and that's okay. Yeah, I agree. I have to, I learned to be more patient uh, with my first kid, just like you did, like letting them be independent, not being so controlling. Like I had to learn those things the hard way where she tells you that in the book. And I think I felt like it made me a better person, made me a better listener, maybe a bit more patient. Patience. I feel like that's like my number one thing, patience. <laughs> but. I know. I got to walk away from something. Like I can't stand there and watch you because <laughs> I then I am super impatient. I know. You're I like, just have to oh walk my God. Away. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, this is not working out. I really enjoyed that she had a lot of questions that you got to really reflect and think about each different chapter. Oh, at the end of every chapter. Yeah. yeah, and each chapter kind of flowed into each other and works off each other, but you don't necessarily have to read it that way. If you have, like she says in the, in the beginning, you can kind of skip forward to something if it's like an immediate, it needs immediate attention. Yeah. Which I thought is cool. But she's... Just so funny, like there's a, a quote in here I want you to, I want to read because it tells you like where she's coming from. She's not coming from a place of like, I want to be a parent. I love being a parent. Oh my God. Uh, I know. I love it. No. She's like, I don't want to get married. I don't want to have kids. Gross. <laughs> uh, but talking about how she didn't want kids, she says, believe me though, I made sure he was aware that having his baby was the nicest thing I could ever do for him. <laughs> I feel like that's how it is between you and Abel. I, no joke, I swear that was me and Abel, 100%. Because I was like, I wanted kids, but maybe like another 5, 10 years. He wanted them right then as soon as we got married. And I'm like, just know I am doing this for you. You want these kids, here they are. 
and I got to it one time, Ooh, which is yeah. good for good for me, I guess. Now that I think back on it, I don't have yeah. to do it too many times. Because you wanted at least more than one. Yeah, right. I, but being pregnant's horrible, so <laughs> they just gave you all at once. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> and I also like too that part where she talks about finding her soulmate. Like she just knew right when she saw her husband that she was gonna marry him. Yeah. That's exactly what happened with me and Abel. I knew exactly. That yeah. day, did I ever tell you? That day at Chuck E. Cheese? When yeah, you at met? Chuck E. Cheese, so romantic. <laughs> no, Chuck e. I, yeah. <laughs> but I swear, when I saw him playing games and stuff, like yeah. in the, when I really took a moment to like look at him, did I tell you? I yeah. heard a voice talk to me. It said, that is going to be your husband. Like that is your husband. You are going to marry him. That's... I don't know whose voice it was. I swear, it wasn't my inner voice. I just heard this voice that's saying, that is the man you're going to marry. That's either beautiful or insane. I know. <laughs> I, and it took me a while to tell him that because I was like, he's probably going to think I'm fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but it's true. Yeah. I, it's so weird how I feel actually really connected to her story because I feel like a lot of what she went through, I personally did do. And I'm like, oh, wow, this yeah. is kind of cool. I enjoyed the transformational story. So again, yeah. uh, child development, personal development, and a bit of a memoir because yeah. we follow her like personal transformational journey through it's... here to being like a individual uh, person to being a mother, a business owner, and a, and a wife. wife. Also, when you're being a parent, you often feel like overwhelmed and you feel like you gotta do everything, yeah. right? But she says in here, uh, along with giving them choices, she says, the reality is we are actually needed a tiny fraction of the time we think we are, right? And you were talking about giving your, laying stuff out for your kids and letting them do it. Mm -hmm. Whereas previously you would have been like, I have to do everything. I got to get them dressed and then I got to get brush their teeth and then I got to feed them and then I got to do stuff for me. And honestly, that was why, that, that, that was exactly what I read and thought, I'm going to let them try and dress themselves. Like that, mm -hmm. I feel like that's the simplest thing for a toddler to be able to do, right? And they did it. I really wasn't needed like I was before, given they're only almost four. I mean, they're still little. There's a lot I still have to do for them for like <laughs> safety reasons. Um, but uh, like they, I even had them clean up after themselves when they were done eating. Yeah. They threw away leftover stuff, put it in the sink, clean, wipe the table down. And what's even more surprising is that they love it. Yeah, they're like, no mama me, no mama me. Yeah. Like I noticed that with Emma, she started saying that with clothes, like, no, I can put it on, you mm -hmm. know? It, may, it gives them a lot of self gratification and mm -hmm. like confidence and empowered, like, I can dress myself. <laughs> Check me out, bro. <laughs> when can I start driving? Exactly. No, <gasps> it's so funny. At red lights, green lights, Emma's like, red light means stop, green light means go. I was like, now you can start driving. Sweet. <laughs> In their mind, they're like, yeah, I can basically do this. Yeah, I can do this. Shoot. <laughs> yeah, so surprisingly uh, good, but not surprisingly good. It's good, but. It didn't live up to the title. I still have to care. <laughs> but we care about our children. And that's why this book is good to read. Super informative. I feel like I'm definitely going to hold on to this book for when the girls get older. And I'm going to keep referring back to it. I almost feel like it's like a, a study guide or like a, yeah. like a Bible study guide thing. I'm just going to go back to it like, oh my gosh, okay. Okay, I, I should yeah. do this at this point in time. Great, we're at that stage. A reference manual. Yeah, a reference manual. Too. There you go. <laughs> to my children, because they're not born uh, with one, so. Yeah, I, I feel like there's a lot of good stuff, but then I feel like there's some stuff that's like, I don't know, it doesn't really add up to me, and maybe just because I'm not um, thinking about it clearly, but like, for example, she says like, um, you gotta give them freedom, but you also have to set limits. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So how do I set, how do I give them freedom, but also set boundaries. So she gives this example where this girl uh, goes out at night and she goes out way past curfew and her mother is like adamant about her getting back on time. So she's like, okay, redesign it. Tell her, all right, you could stay out until nine and here's all your stuff back, but just be back by nine. So that way, uh, you know, there's clear boundaries. You have to be back by nine, you get all your stuff. If not, there's consequences. But isn't that what got us into this situation to begin with? Like. You told her she needs to be back at nine, and if and not, she would have consequences. Right. She didn't come back. So now giving her back all of her stuff and saying you're responsible, and then now you have to come back at nine. Like, I feel like mm. it's not solving the problem. But I think it also needs to start at an early age, setting those boundaries. Mm. 
giving them the choices. You know what I mean? You need to start the mindset not only with yourself but with the kids so everything's already going. It's like there's a nice flow. So Building that mindset able, of responsibility. Exactly. And they can be like, shoot, I wasn't back on time. My mom's right. Yeah. I should have. And also the not saying, I told you so type of yeah. thing, shaming them, things like that. I mean, it really all comes into play. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Now that you say that, I'm thinking about it from a, a point of view of respect, right? right? If you let your kids handle it on your own, they respect mm -hmm. you. And when they respect you, they will want to be back on time because you told them, but they also want to be able to talk to you and they enjoy being with you a lot more. Yeah. And they know that if they're in trouble, they won't enjoy that experience. And that is a whole chapter in there. And that was one of the ones I actually went to first because I was like, how can I get my kids to respect me and what I need them to do or, you know, but I'm like, okay, well, I need to respect them too. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. Even though they're toddlers, I mean, they still deserve and need respect to feel like, okay, well, my mom respects me. I want to respect her too because she's a good person. I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. We have a good relationship. We have a good relationship. I don't want to damage the relationship. Exactly. Like I should be home on time. I really should. Yeah. And I shouldn't lie and things like that because she doesn't lie to me. You know, if she says she's going to pick me up from soccer at this time, I know she's going to be there because we have like this respect. This and if she's thing. late for picking me up for soccer, why, why should I be on time? Exactly. It's kind of like at work, right? You kind of... You lead by example. It's the same thing with your kids. Yeah. You respect them, they'll respect you. You have to just keep it consistent and just try and stay on the same path with all the same boundaries and all the same things. And I also like how out. she said giving them real life consequences, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, if your kid, your teen, again talking about teens, comes into some money and he blows all of his money on some toys or candy or whatever, uh, but now he wants gas money to go to the mall. You can be like, bro, you just had money. You should have used it on gas money. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And then you just have to leave it at that because I know uh, parents' hearts are going to be breaking. They're like, oh my God, my little mijo needs to go to the mall. <laughs> I need to give him money. You can't. You yeah. got to. That's what she says. You got to say set boundaries. You got to stick to them. So that way he knows next time he comes into money, he's got to put some aside to save for gas. And that's what adults need to do. But I think also she kind of points out though, you, you can't tell them what to do. They don't want it. They don't want you to fix their problems. It's more of like, you should ask them questions like, Oh, well you had, like, didn't you get all that money? Oh, you didn't put any aside. Like you didn't put any in a, like a savings or anything yeah. and leave it at that. Cause then they get to thinking like, shoot, maybe next time I should save something, but you didn't tell them to save things. You let them sit and think about like, Oh, I should have probably saved it. Yeah. And then next time, They'll be like, ah, I don't want to screw up like last See, time. Respect, letting them learn their own lessons, giving them choices. Yeah. I mean, for like my kids, I remember, remember I was like, don't run or don't jump because you're going to fall and hit your head and it's going to break open or something. And you were like, geez, <laughs> that's very graphic. I was like, yeah. well, they need to know what's going to happen. Yeah. It's very dangerous. Your brains are going to be scattered all across the floor. Yeah. And hey. I'm not getting a broom because it's very sticky, those yeah. brains. <laughs> that's too much work for me, okay? I'm going to make you <laughs> clean it up. <laughs> Uh, the only thing I had a hard time with mostly through the whole book was um, the education part. And I think because we come from a different background where we were more really low income and education is kind of like the gateway to like, yeah. you know, better jobs, more money, things like that. For her, she was saying like, don't nag your kids about grades and doing well in school. I don't know. I kind of had a hard time like. Connecting with that. I got what she was saying because yeah, you don't want to nag them to where they don't want to listen to you. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. But you also want to make sure they're on a good path and get a good education, get good grades to to be wherever they want to be when yeah. they choose to be. And pushing them is part of it because if you let them do their own thing, they're always going to choose the path of least resistance. Yeah. So you got to push them a little bit. Um, but maybe I, just in a different way. I don't know. Yeah. Like how? How can you keep them... If they don't want to do well in school, they're, they're, they're not going to. And there was also a moment where she was talking about letting them learn their own lessons, right? Um, she uses an example of like her kids played with guns one time and that sparked an important conversation about gun safety, mm -hmm. which in my mind, um, like, oh my God. I was like, no way <laughs> like that would ever happen. If right. I found out that they were playing with guns with one of their friends, they will never see that friend again because it's not incumbent upon them to be safe, right? If you're around somebody, they don't know how to be safe with a weapon, they could be pointing it at you and blow your brains out. Like, 
Yeah. That there's there's just boundaries you never cross or even allow your children to be into. And I'm not gonna allow my child to go into a situation like that would be like, he'll learn about gun safety once he gets blasted in the face. Yeah, once he shoots off his hand. I'm like, okay, I get your point, but that is way on another level. That's too intense. That would never happen. I don't know. I just there were certain things like that. I was kinda like, oh, I get it, but maybe not so Yeah, bad. not so much. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um but overall, I think it's good. Yeah. If um, you're concerned about being a good parent, you could read it. But if you're concerned about being a good parent, you're probably already a good parent. That's right. You're on the right path to begin um, with. This just gives you kind of some skills. Yeah. All the